go to the next topic of psychoidal curves okay so conic section we have seen the next one is psychoidal curves okay in psychoidal curves we are going to see cycloid epicycloid and hypocycloid how to construct these curves okay cycloid if you see the cycloid is nothing but suppose i have a circle so i am marking a point on this circle say this is p if it rolls on a straight line if this curve if this circle rolls on a straight line okay this point p of this circle rolling circle will occupy various position okay if i connect these positions okay this point p of the rolling circle of this radius position if i connect that locus okay this position i will get a cycloid connect that i will get a cycloid if this circle point of this rolling circle occupies various positions while rolling on a straight line okay that position if i connect it i will get a cycloid okay that is a defined as cycloid make a note cycloid is a curve generated by a point on the circumference of a circle which rolls on a straight line right is it clear so why we need the cycloid curve in say in application why we have to construct this what is the significance of this curve is it clear cycloid is a curve generated by a point on the circumference of a circle which rolls in a plane surface along a straight line without slipping the rolling circle is called a generating circle okay the straight line on which the cycloid a circle is rolled is called a base line right the circle if it rolls for one revolution okay what is that distance it will travel to the straight line the circle if it rolls one revolution it will what is the distance it will travel to the straight line over the straight line 2 pi r okay it will travel to 2 pi r distance it will travel to 2 pi r distance okay so this is the r of the rolling circle radius of the rolling circle it will travel to pi r distance right i will get a cycloid of curve this for one revolution i will get a cycloid of one convolution so this is called one convolution right for one revolution of a rolling circle i will get a cycloid of one convolution right see this i can see this right the circle it is not the point okay i have two and the point of convergence here you see this while rolling on the circle okay the point on the rolling circle it traces a point it traces a path that path is nothing but a cycloid how to draw this you see right then we we'll move on to epicycloid that is an, another one epicycloid so the same circle rolling circle okay the same rolling circle same radius r same same rolling circle if it rolls if it rolls over an another circle okay if it rolls over an another circle i have another circle like this instead of straight line i have a circle that is a base circle so if the rolling circle it rolls over a base circle okay i will get a curve that is called a epicycloid okay i can mark the point here in this rolling circle it will roll to this along this curve for circle okay base circle to a distance of 2 pi r okay i will get a curve like this 
right? I will get a curve like this. If this point is, if this circle is rolls for one convolution, right? So this is called epicycle. You can see here. You make more epicycle. Again, it is a curve generated by a point on the circumference of a circle, which rolls in a plane along outside of another circle. Along outside of another circle. It's outside. Outside of another circle. The rolling circle is called a generating circle again. The circle on which the generating circle rolls is called a base circle or directing circle. Okay, so we can see this. We can see this. Over and another circle, the rolling circle it rolls. Okay, the point is marked on a rolling circle, so that point will be facing an epicycloid. See, right? I have five convolutions here. Right? So you are asked to draw one convolution of epicycloid. So how to construct that? See, is it clear? Have any? Clarification, right? We move on to the next one, hypocycloid. Hypocycloid, you can note it down as the difference is the circle which is going to roll on another circle, instead of outside it, now it is going to roll inside, then it is called hypocycloid. If the rolling circle rolls inside to another circle, the path traced by a point marked on a rolling circle is called a hypocycloid. smooth velocity 
ratio translation to one another shaft. Then, so there is a very important one in gear. The gear you can see in gear P. See here. See the gear P. Okay, the gear P. Either this P, this profile of this P. Okay, that will be either a cycloidal profile or a involute profile. Okay, both gears we have cycloidal gear we have involute gears we have. Right, involute we are going to see. But once you have this cycloidal or involute gear, then only there will be a smooth transmission can be occur between the shafts. Okay, if I have a shaft, it's rotating in a speed. Okay. In a velocity, that speed has to transfer to a parallelly. I have another shaft. If this rotation is transferred to a parallel shaft, how it can be done? The through gears only it can be done. Okay, if I have a gear, that in the gear, the tooth profile is a very important one. Okay, to have the same velocity transmission has to occur to another shaft, the profile is a very important factor to transfer the same velocity ratio to the another shaft. Right. If I have a same two, I have a shaft like this, okay, I have a friction plate like this, I have another plate. If it is a friction plate, so this one is rotating is in a velocity. If I want to transfer this velocity to this speed, to this plate, if it is a friction plate, no any profile, if it is a friction plate, for some extent it will transfer. So if the load is more in this one, okay, what will happen? The transmission, there will be a slippage occurs here. Okay, there will be a slippage occurs here if I have a profile, circular profile like this. Okay, so this transmission can be transferred after some point of time, there will be belts. Okay, cross belts. Okay, the belts will, I have a belt, okay, that belt will transfer the velocity of a one shaft to one another shaft through belts. Again, here using belt, that will be slippage due to the higher loads in the one shaft, okay. So, the belts also that will be slippage. So, to avoid slippage, purely to avoid slippage, we have to go to this kind of conjugate profiles. The conjugate profiles you can see it's either a cycloidal one or a involute profile. Okay, you want to see the video here. Okay. You see the two shafts what I told it's trying to transmit the velocity of this driven shaft and level shaft. Okay. So that will be a slippage you can see. Okay. So perfectly the speed cannot be transferred to one another. Okay. If a pulley, uh, if a belt system is there, so again there will be a slippage due to the heavy load. Right. See, it is not rotating. This is, there will be a, there won't be a smooth transmission. There will be a slippage problem between the two shafts which we are trying to transfer the so I can have a gear profile like an involute or a cycloidal profile like this. That would be a perfect true transmission occurs without slippage. Okay, that is a big advantage. Okay, any mechanical transmission system you can see, that will be, it will be of gears. Either it will be an involute gear or a cycloid gear. Right. So you can see the point on this plane is moving through this belt, okay. So that point which is moving, if I trace it with a template at the back, you can see that profile is nothing but an involute profile. Okay, that's what you are going to see. Okay. So that involute profile is the same the other plate, other shaft, if I have a template. The same work has to be traveled by another shaft also, I should have the same profile. Okay. The same involute or cycloidal profile I should have on the, both the shaft. Then only like the two transition occur. Right. <coughs> this is an involute.
Fourier proof and actually break. Is it clear? So for any transmission, you can use mechanical. It should have a, either cycloidal profile or involute profile. You can see in another video. Okay, another one. You see here, this is a gear, single tooth gear. You can see in this T, this blue region here, in this one, it is an epicycle one. So here in this, so here you can see this red one is an epicycle one, this blue one is an hypocycle one. Okay. So both epi and hypocycle are together measures like this, okay, in two teams. Okay, using this, I can use this one in pump, okay. Compressing gases, I can have pump, okay, this profile. Okay, if it is close to the thing, okay, it squeezes some fluid and it pushes the same fluid out. Okay, you can see that. See here, okay.
What is the final length here? 3.14 into 15. How much? How much it is? Huh? 157. Right. 157 for 157 mm. Yeah. 
So you should not give you the one starting from the left side. Okay. So how the circle is going to roll? Okay. Which direction is going to have contact on the base circle or the base line or base circle? Okay. So that division has to be rotated as the first one, right? From there you have to give the rotation, right? So then this is my circle center. So once the circle rolls, once the circle rolls, okay, at these various positions of the baseline, the circle will occupy various central locations. Is it? Isn't it? So at these various base line positions, while the circle rolls, it will occupy various central locations. So to mark that centers, what I can do, I can draw a central line from the circle center. So this is nothing but a line. This is a line, this is a path while rolling, the circle while rolling, the center of the circle will be facing this path, isn't it? So while rolling the circle, the center of the circle always will be fall on this straight line. So at position 1, the center will be here, I can mark the correct vertical, at position 1, position 2, The various central positions I like can mark it. This is my center one. Two, 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 three, center four, five. have to draw a circle and divide it into 12 segments, draw a baseline, the same number of segments you have to divide the baseline, then get a central line, okay, that central line, so you have to mark the base central location corresponding to the base locations, right. So these are all the various centers while the circle rolls it will occupy it. Right. Then what I have to do to get the cycloidal points, various cycloidal points, 12 cycloidal points, since I have divided 12 segments, so from each from each segment of this segment locations of this circle, I can draw a horizontal line up to the end. Right. So this you see here one while drawing one from one horizontal line, it will match the same horizontal line match with which division? Eleven also. Right. The same. If your circle and divisions are perfect. It should be, it should match. The 11 and 1 should match with that same horizontal line. Right. Similarly, 10 and 2 have to match with that same horizontal line. Right. Similarly, 8 and 4. So 9 and 3 are matching with the same central line. Right. So 8 and 4. Seven and five. The sixth one we lost. Is it clear? Right. So I have to draw horizontal lines. That is the path of the line of these points. Okay. Se these segments, okay, 1 and 11 will match 2 and 10, 9 and 3, 8 and 4, 7 and 5, right. So this is the constructional one, you have to do it to get the hydraulic point. Once this is over, what you have to do, you have to measure the radius of the base circle. What is the radius of the base circle here? Radius of the base circle, 25. You measure it in your compass, that is a constant radius, okay. You measure it in your compass. Keep the center 1 as center, right. And get a, get a cycloidal point on a horizontal line passing through division 1. Is it clear? Keep the radius 
25 in your bumper, keep center 1 as center and get a cyclotal point on a horizontal line drawn from 1. So if I get, okay, I will get a cyclotal point from here, I will get a cyclotal point here. So this is my horizontal line pass through division 1 of the base circle. So this is my center from here and cutting the radius 25 and get a point. This is my P1. So similarly the same procedure has to follow for various centers. Okay. The same radius 25 using in your compass, keep center 2 as center, right? Then cut a division on which line? Which line? Which line? The line passing through the second division, right? So if you are keeping center 2 as center, you have to get a cyclonal point on line, horizontal line passing through division 2, right? So here, from here, I can get a cyclonal point here on 2, which is 9 feet, right? Similarly, Using center 3, where I have to get the cyclotic third cyclotic point? Nine. And 3 line. Okay, 9 and 3 horizontal lines from here, from center 3. Okay. This is my P3. Right. From center 4, I can have it, I can get it on 4. Okay, I can get it on 4. So this is my P4. From center 5, I can get it here. This is P5. Center 6. Exactly it has to match with the center 6. Where I have to get the point 5. Six. On the 6th line, exactly it will match. I will get it perpendicularly. Why? Because this is nothing but the radius. The distance is nothing but the radius. If I cut it, I have to get it exactly. Then center 7. I can get it here. P. 7, P8, similarly, P, P9, P10, P12 again. Right. So this way you have to get the cyclonal point. Okay. Measure the radius in your compass, keep the corresponding center, center 1, then get a cyclonal point on the corresponding horizontal line passing through that segment 1. Okay, similarly segment 2, segment 3, segment 4, you have to get the cyclonal points. Right. Now if you join this point with a smooth curve, using a 2H pencil, first of all you get try to get a smooth curve, then you have to draw the You see from point 1, you can Cycloid. Okay. <coughs> Next point, I can you can see I am marking a point here. 
I am marking a point here. Say this is my point M. Okay, the point is in between falls in between point 6 and point 7. So this is a point I am getting having in my cycloid. So you see how you have arrived at the point 6. How you have arrived at this point 6? I had a division in my baseline, right? First of all, I had a division in my baseline. I projected that to the central line. Okay, that is the thing with my to get the center of this segment. Okay, O6. Then from this O6, I have got the P6 having the radius. Okay, then a rolling circle radius having the rolling circle radius. I have got the P6. Okay, that is the procedure you have followed. From the baseline, you have gone to the central location. Then from the central location, you have arrived at the cycloidal point with that radius 25, right? So now I have a point. I have to go to the base location of this point here. Okay. The point and model, what is the location in the baseline? How I can do it? In the reverse manner, I can arrive at the base location of this point. Okay. How I can arrive at? What I have to do, first of all? What I have to do? If you see, I, I have arrived at cycloidal point from the base line point. Okay. From 6, you see from 5. Okay. From 5, I have got the central location of 5. Okay. From center, I have got the B5. I have taking the radius of 25 and cutting it on the corresponding line. So similarly, I have a point here now. So you get the location of that point on the baseline. Okay, I have to take the 25 in my 25 radius in my compass. Okay, the same 25 I have to cut it on the where? Central line. I have to cut it on the central line. Okay, so this 25. If I cut it where? I have to get the center of this point M. Yeah. In between O6 and O7. Here I will get O6 and O7. This is going to be my O M. Is it clear? Center of this point M. So by taking the radius, by taking the by having the radius of twenty-five. What a location O M. From that, I can project it to the baseline. What is that? It is again M here. Right. So this is the reverse procedure you have to do it here. To draw the tangent and normal. The mark point anywhere. Okay. Get the central location of that point. Get the base location of that point. Baseline location of that point. Okay. In a reverse manner, they have to get it. Arrive at this M. Now I can join this M and this M with a straight line. What is that? After I join this M and the already mark M is on the side part. On my arm. This is nothing but my normal. This is nothing but my normal. Right. So perpendicular to this normal is my tangent. So the normal is small portion of how we can dominate. So perpendicular, I can keep my graph to one scale and the other scale will be perpendicular. Using that, I can draw a normal portion. This is my normal, this is my tangent. Is it clear? Drawing tangent and normal, you have to mark the point, go get the same point, central location, get the same point, base location. Join the base point location and this point you have marked with a line that is nothing but my normal. Perpendicular to that is the tangent. Okay, this is how I can construct a cycle. Do you have any clarification there? You have to divide the circle into 12 parts, right? And if it, if it is not a finite number, you have to go for a constructional procedure to divide this length. Okay, the length of the circle is going to roll is nothing but the 2 pi r distance, circumference of the base circle. Right? Is it clear? Now, we will go to the next one, epicycloid. How to construct an epicycloid? Take the problem. Quickly wrote it down. 
quickly wrote down a constant and epicycloid generated by a circle of diameter 50 mm. When it rolls over an another circle of diameter 150 mm. Now epicycloid will have a base circle and will have a rolling circle. Okay, base circle diameter is 150 mm. Rolling circle diameter again is 50 mm. And draw the tangent and normal not at any point, okay, at any point on the epicycloid. At any point on the epicycloid. So similarly, make the, the problem for hypocycloid also. Because I am going to post this one. Draw a hypocycloid for a rolling circle of 40 mm diameter which rolls inside to a base circle of 200 mm diameter for one convolution. Draw the tangent and normal at a point on the hypocycloid. <coughs> 70 mm from the center of the base circle. So, point you cannot mark in the hypocycloid, you cannot mark at any point, okay? From the base circle, from the Base circle, right. From the base circle center, I have to get a 70 mm distance. I have to mark the point. That point, you have to draw the tangent and normal in hypocycloid. Right. Problem is over. This is the important you see. Base circle radius you take it in your compass. Base circle radius. What is the radius here? 25. 25 in your compass. You keep various centers as center. If I am keeping center 4 as center, okay, center 4 as center, so where I have to cut it, get the cycloidal point? On the fourth segment, a line going through a fourth segment, okay, this is the line goes through the fourth segment. If I am keeping center 4, I have to get a point, cycloidal point on the line, corresponding fourth line. Okay. 25, it's a constant radius, okay, it's the arc. The cycloidal point will be obtaining having a radius of the base circle in your compass. Right, for epicycloid, hypocycloid, anything. Right, so the cycloidal point should be obtained having the base circle as radius in your compass, keeping the corresponding central location and get the point on the corresponding division point or divisional arc. As for cycloid and epicycloid and hypocycloid concept. Yeah, fourth and six point, fourth and eight. Four I will get here. Center eight is here. Okay, center eight is here. Eight also you will get getting on the same line. Eight also you are getting on the same line. See, right. Point four. Same line. Right. By point 4 here you will get point 8. Corresponding to the central location you will get. Right. How is the circle? How is the circle? So this point is rolling. It is rolling. The circle is occupied. It is occupied the
150 mm, then the base circle radius will be 75. Okay, see here, first of all, to draw the, before drawing the base circle, what I am going to do, you see here, right, I have to divide this circle, we'll start, epicycloid, so the base circle, uh, generating circle radius is 25, diameter is 50, right. So before drawing the base circle, what you have, you can do for easiness, you divide this circle into 12 divisions. Not like that. First of all, you divide this circle into 12 divisions. Here. Listen. Now, to draw the base circle, what I am going to do, I am going to take either the first division like this. Okay, I am going to extend, not vertically this division as usual like cycloid. So, I am taking this one, inclined one. I am extending it on the same fashion. Right. I am extending it on the same fashion. I am going to keep this as my origin point of the rolling circle. Right. Is it clear? So normally you don't take as a vertical line. Right. So you take the first segment as usual and draw a slant line. You want this point as a cycloidal point or the point on the uh, generating circle which will trace the epicycloid. Right. So I want to that as a point, moving point, right? Now here, so the circle is going to roll with the base circle. What is the radius of the base circle? 75. 75. So from here, I can mark the center of the base circle. Okay. So from here, 75 I can mark it. Okay, 75 I can mark it. Right, 75 I can mark it. So this is going to be my center of the base circle. So this is my center of the generating circle. Right. So this distance in dimension does make it. So the diameter I can dimension it like this. Otherwise it's not, it's not. Okay, you leave it. So using this center, I can draw a base circle R. Okay, so base circle R, using this center, 75 as radius, I can draw a base circle R. Right. Now, is it clear? Now this is going to be my base circle. Right. This is how you have to construct an epicycloid and for hypocycloid also. Right. Draw the circle, take the first division, get the central location of the base circle. Right. Now, once this is over, okay, see here. Now, the circle has to have to, you have to, you are going to construct an epicycloid for one convolution. The circle is going to roll like this. The circle is going to roll like this. So for one convolution, one revolution of the circle, what distance will travel over the base circle? What distance will travel? 2 pi r. Along this, over this circle, it will travel 2 pi r arc length. 2 pi r arc length it will travel. So this arc length we cannot measure like this. If it is a straight line, we can measure it. It is an arc. How I can measure the 2 pi r distance? So I have to convert this in terms of angle. Okay. So what is the 2 pi r length it will occupy? So what will be the included angle it will take? That you have to find out. What will be the angle it will be? Anybody? It will travel. For 2 pi r length it will travel this circle. What will be the angle it will travel? Huh? So you see, you know this. So I have a segment of an R. Okay, like this. So if this is the center, if this is the radial, if this is theta, what will be this? What will be this 
of length. If the radius is R, if this angle is theta, what will be this of length? It will be the trigonometry you have. This is nothing but simply this of length will be R theta. Right. This of length is nothing but this of theta. Right. So now from I know this, this is nothing but 2 pi r, what I have now. This r I know. Right. So how I can get the theta? 2 pi r. So 2 pi r. Sorry. R theta. Is equal to 2 pi r. Right. R theta is equal to 2 pi r. So what is theta here? 2 pi r theta. 2 pi r by r. So this is the one you have to put it down. Okay. So what is the 2 pi? It is 360. Okay. R radius is 25 for this. R is nothing but the radius of the base circle. Okay. Radius of the generating circle. The capital R is nothing but the radius of the base circle. The small r is nothing but the radius of the generating circle. So what is the theta if you travel here is nothing but theta equal to 2 pi into r is 25 by 75. So what I will get? Huh? This is 3. 360 by 3? 120 degrees. 360 by 3 will be 120 degrees. Right. So for 120 degrees, for 120 degrees, for 120 degrees, if I measure the arc length, the travel is equal to 2 pi r. Okay. So this angle is 120 degree you have to measure. This is nothing but 90 theta. Right. This is how you have to find out the theta for epicycloid and epicycloid. You have to find out the theta. Then only you can proceed. Right. So the finding out theta, theta equals 2 pi in 360 in this small r and capital R. Small r is the generating circle, capital R is the base circle radius. Right. Now once you have finished this, you can mark this. Now I have divided the circle into 12 divisions. Similarly, this segment of this R, okay, 2 pi R distance, I have to divide it into 12. So instead of dividing this R length into 12 divisions, it is impossible. I can divide this angle into 12. Okay, angle into 12 in the sense, yeah, 10, 10 degree each. So I can divide this into 10, 10 degrees each. So this is
how I can divide it into the fraction, I can divide it 10, 10 degrees. Now, the circle you see here, now I have to notate this circle. So, the first circle, location I can give it. This is 1, 3, 4, Right. Similarly, the circle I have to give the notation. If I told you have to carefully give the notation starting where you have to start the number. Okay. Where I have to notate one. How the circle is going to roll? The circle is going to roll like this. Okay. If it rolls over this circle, which segment have contact first? This one. Okay. So I can mark this as one.
or drawn from 9 and 3 is a different one, it comes nearer to the central arc. Central arc is a different one, it comes a little bit below to the arc drawn from 9 and 3. Right, is it clear? So, from these various centers, using the radius of the generating circle in your compass, I can get a cycloidal, epicycloidal point on the corresponding arc. Right. So, from center 1, I can get it at arc 1, center 2, arc 2, center 2 is this, arc 2 is this one, arc 2, center 3, arc 3, center 4. Okay, for hypocycloid, 
value will be same. Okay, the angle will be same for hypocycloid. The procedures are same. Okay, everything same. So what is the difference you can see? So what is the angle for this problem? What is the angle for the hypocycloid? Given problem. Theta is 2 pi into R is what is the base circle radius? 100. Base circle radius is 100. Generating circle radius? 20. 20. Squad is 20. Right. What will be the angle you will get? 90. This is 5. 90. Right. 90 degrees. So the included angle will be 90 degrees. So how you can see as usual you draw a circle. As usual you draw a circle. You divide this circle into 12 divisions. Right. Then what I have to do? I have to take the first division. I can go for an inclined line. Okay, from here, from where I have to mark the center of the base circle. That is the difference. Here, the base circle is this. So for hypocycloid, where I will have the base circle? Above this. Okay, the base circle will be here. The base circle will be here. So that is the difference here. Right. So what I have to do? So here the base circle is here, that I have the base circle. So what will be the base circle radius where I can mark the base circle center? From where? From here. So my point is going to be here now. My point is going to be here, P. So this is 50. 100 means 5. 360 divided by 5, 72 P. Right. Right. Now, this is my point B. So this is my base circle. See here. This is my base circle. Right. Now, the point of the circle point, how I have to mark it. See here. Circle is going to roll how? It is going to roll like this. So once it is going to roll like this, which division will have contact first with the base circle? This one. Isn't it? This one will have the contact first with the base circle. So I have to give notation, start my notation from here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Right. Then what I have to do? I have to fix this angle as usual. So what is the center of, from where I have to measure the center of the base circle? P. From P I have to measure the center of the base circle. That is 100. So I have to measure 100, 40, 80, right, 100, this is the center of the base circle, right. Then, for this 72 degree angle, for this 72 degree angle, I have to close this, right, 72 degree angle I have to close this. Then what I have to do? How to this? Okay, I have to try at central arc. Right. Central arc from this center. Like this. I have to divide this 72 into 70, 12 equal divisions. Okay, 72 into divided by 12, how much? 6, six. six degrees. So I can divide this into 6 equal divisions. Second. So how many divisions will be? 12. 12 divisions. Right. Now I have to mark the various centers. Right. Then what I have to do? I have to draw the arcs from this center. So from where various segments, I can draw arcs. So here and then the procedures are same. So you have to take the measurement and keep the center as the various centers, right? I can get the cycloidal point. My first point I will get here, second, third, fourth, fifth. Like this I will get. I will end up with a hypocycloid. Like this. Drawing tangent and normal again is same. Right, you will see more.